Hi there, here are 10 uh, pro Gutenberg tips for editing with the block editor. I hope you find them really useful. If you have any comments, stick them in the comments below. But here we go. Right, this one is a cool way that you can move blocks easily. It's not the most intuitive thing, but once you know how to do it, it's super useful. So you just click on the block you want to move. Then you click on these three dots up here, which says more options, and then just select move to. Once you select that, you'll get this blue line here. You simply hit the up arrow or the down arrow on your keyboard to move that blue line up and down. You get to the point where you want it to go to within the page and you simply hit return. And like magic, the block moves all the way to that position. So that's a really simple way that you can move a block up or down the page. Right, this next one is one I see all the time on the forums. Uh, it's a really common problem that how do you wrap your text around an image, which was incredibly easy to do, to do in the old editor. This is how you do it in the block editor. So you put your text in like I've done here. Then you add your image above where the text. So I'm just going to add the image block as you normally would. I'm going to choose one from my library. Let's choose that one. Okay, there it is. Now you have to size it so the text can wrap, so you just size it to approximately the size you want. And the key bit here is you have to align it. So if I align that to the right, then the text will naturally wrap around to the left. Likewise, if I change the alignment here, the text will wrap around to the right. So that's how you can align text around your images, just like, just like we used to do in the old days of the old editor. One of the most common problems I see people having is with these buttons where they, they put them into like a cover block here uh, and they can't fathom out uh, how to align them because there's no options over here on the right to align them. There's no options up here to align them. The secret is thinking about hierarchy because these buttons are part of a bigger block. And so you have to choose the top level buttons block and you can see the hierarchy by clicking on the outline view up here. So that's the secret to this. Click on that and that will show you actually where, where you're editing. So this is really useful in all sorts of situations. And it can tell us here, we've actually just highlighted this button here, which is this one. Hence we can do things like change the radius of that one and we can change the background color. But we can't change the alignment because we have to be at the top level, this level here, if we want to align these these two little buttons. So just select the top level by clicking on it. And now you'll see up here we have the alignment option. Okay. And we can align it center. Just as simple as that. So the secret source of this is make sure you're selecting the top level. Because if you're down at this level, you're just editing this in particular button. Okay, so just make sure you click on these three lines, click the top level. Now you can align them. This next one's really cool. This lets you create these beautiful links uh, within your pages that when you click on them, your users can go right down the page to a specific point. So they're called anchor, anchor um, points within the page. That's really easy to do now in the block editor. So here's how you do it. Right, this is how you do it. So the first thing you need to do is you need to create the anchor. Um, so we go down here and you go to the, the heading um, that you want the anchor to go into. That could be a paragraph, it can be an image, and it can be any block, but I'm gonna do it to this heading. And this is where you uh, create your anchor. So you can, call, you can put, call this what you like, but this is what you're gonna to refer to in a minute. So just make sure you remember it. I'm gonna call mine scrolls. That's the anchor, so that's now anchored to that. Now I'm gonna create the link to that anchor, and I'm gonna do it right at the top of the page. You can also do them anywhere. Um, and I'm just gonna put some words in. And then I'm gonna link it. Now this is the key bit to remember. You just create the, create the little link, click the little link, and here's what you do. You do hash, which is not that, you do hash, and then you put the name of your anchor. Okay, so you have to get the name right, otherwise it just won't work. And that will now be linked to that anchor point. So when we view the page and click on the link up here, it should now scroll all the way down to that point and you see how it has. Now you see how um, in my demo here, it did a really nice smooth scroll. So that is using an additional plugin, which is really cool. It's a free plugin that can give you that nice smooth scroll effect. And it's this one here. So let's make this bigger for you. It's that one there, page scroll to ID. So if you just, you, it's a free plugin, so you can add that to your site. It's got some nice settings in there as well. Add that to the to your site and you'll get that lovely, if you do create anchors, you'll get that lovely smooth scroll effect within your pages. 
So this next one's really cool. This is a uh, free Chrome extension that you can install on Chrome and it's called Detective Wapoo. Um, and it will tell you, well, you can go to any site after you've installed it and it appears as a little icon like this up here. And you can go to any site and then you can click on that icon and it will then tell you, it'll do its best to tell you anyway, what blocks that site is using on that particular page. So you can see on this page, it tells me here, this is the cover block, this is the quote block, doesn't seem to work on the list block at the moment. That's an image block. This is a gallery block. So it's really useful um, if you want to look at somebody's site and work out just how they've constructed the page. Um, and it's called, let me just refresh your memory, it's called Detective Wapoo. It's a free Chrome extension, so you can just download it for free, add it to Chrome, and it's really cool. Right, this next one is really useful if you're building more complex layouts with the block editor where you've got container blocks and you've got nested blocks within container blocks. It's called edit modes. You can access it in two ways, either by clicking on this pencil here, and then if you select the select option here, you can then just click on these blocks and it, rather than it editing them, it will tell you what they are and you can select them. So as you click around here, you can easily see what the blocks are. The other way to do this um, is to just click on the block and hit escape. So that's a quicker way, it's a keyboard shortcut. Just click on the block when you're in edit mode and click escape and it'll highlight that block for you. So it's a great way that you can just go around your page quickly and just look at the actual um, the hierarchy of your blocks and also you know just making sure you're editing the right blocks. If you want to edit a particular block that you've clicked on you just hit return and then you'll be focused on that block. So that's called edit modes, really useful, not, not very well um, much used my guess is, uh, but a real useful addition to the editor. If you like grids, I love grids, then this next one's cool. This shows you, is going to show you how you can use the standard media and text block that comes with the block editor to create these nice grid layouts. Uh, no plugins needed at all. So this is how you do that. Let's show you how this works. So I'm just gonna add the media and text block over here, like so. Uh, I'm gonna add it into the page. Then I'm gonna choose a photo from my library. Let's choose this one here. Okay, and then my content's gonna go here. So I'm just gonna grab some dummy content and stick it over here, like so. So at the moment, we're not, we're not, we don't have any kind of background, so that's the next thing to do. So we need to select the whole block to change the background. So I'm just gonna select the top level here. And over here on the right, I'm gonna set the background color, like so. So I can choose any of these colors. Uh, let's go for that one, actually, that's quite cool. So you see how we've, we're kind of almost there. Then all I did for this, I added the heading block above. So, and then I added a block underneath by hitting return forward slash and then buttons to find the buttons block. I can't see anything because of the color, so I just need to change the color settings, the background to white, and that's fine, okay. Uh, now the other thing you actually need to do, which is really important is, can you see how we've got the image isn't quite clearly covering here? So we need to select the top level here, and the key setting is this option here, crop image to fill entire column. Select that and then you will get that nice um, sort of grid layout. You can obviously change them just by dragging them like this. So you can change the proportions, which is really cool. Uh, I'm kind of going to go for that, I think. So I'm going to create another one underneath. A really good tip on this is to duplicate the one you've done. So you just click on these three dots, duplicate it. There's the new one. And you can swap over the image, or you, if you want to. Actually, that looks quite cool. But I'm going to swap over the image, like so. And then you can change the image by clicking on it and hit replace here. Uh, to open up your media library. So just choose a different image. And then really it's just a qu question of going in here and changing the text to suit. Okay, and that's that's how you can create that really lovely grid layout. And again, you can change the uh, proportions of all, all of these to suit what you want to do. But that's just using the standard media and text blog um, with a few little tweaks to it. I think it's a really cool effect. You can create some lovely um, grid layouts very, very quickly with it. When WordPress 5 came out, they introduced a new thing which was called full screen mode. So when you're in editor mode, like I am here, you lose all your normal WordPress menus on the left, which confused the heck out of many people. And lots of people wanted them back and complained, and I sort of agree with that. And it's just a setting though, it's easy to get back. To get your menus back, you just go to the top right of your screen, click on these three lines here, and just make sure 
full screen mode is deselected and your lovely normal navigation menus, your WordPress friends over here, come back straight away. So just click on these three lines, uh, three dots rather, make sure full screen mode isn't selected and you will have your dashboard looking like it should. This next one I've creatively called how to fix the toolbar. Uh, because that's what it does. So you'll see this uh, when you're working, this is especially useful actually when you're working in um, container blocks where you've got blocks within blocks within blocks. The normal toolbar can often just get in the way. So, you know, if I wanted to edit this title, I have to faff around here. Um, but there is a way of fixing this uh, to the top and it just makes the editing experience for me much, much uh, simpler and cleaner. So I do it um, whenever I'm using the block editor these days. It's very simple to do, all you do is you click on these three dots up here and it's the top option here, top toolbar, select that and that will now be fixed to the top of the browser. So when you're clicking in these various blocks, it's just always up here and doesn't get in the way of your editing experience. This one's really useful, uh, it's reusable blocks and this allows you to reuse a block that you've created in multiple pages on your site. So it's very, very useful if you've spent quite a bit of time um, you know designing something but you want to maybe use it in multiple places in multiple pages it's very simple to do so I'm going to show you how to do it with this block here uh, you just select the whole block so just make sure you select the, the top level of especially if you're using container blocks which is likely to be the case if you're creating reusable blocks probably uh, so select the top level and then click on these three dots here and it's this option here just select add to reusable blocks and then it's going to prompt you to save that block and give it a name. So I'm going to call it what we do. And that will save it to a library. Um, and then if I create a brand new page, we will see that I can use that block within any page. So I just click on the blue add block sign up here. And can you see here we've got reusable. That's where all your reusable blocks will be. Uh, you just click on it and that's going to bring it into the page. Now if you want to edit that block, um, you can up here, can you see that you've got this option to convert to regular blocks? So I'm gonna do that. And now you're back in edit mode, so you could change it. I mean, you, you could keep it how it was, but you can change it here if you want to. Now changing it here after you've converted it to a reusable block won't affect the, the original block that you created. You're just editing this one here. So that's reusable blocks. There is also a place where you can manage your and see your reusable blocks. And to see that, uh, you click on these three dots up here and it's this option down here where it says manage all reusable blocks. Click onto that and that's going to show you your reusable blocks where you can edit them. You can also export them. So if you want to use them on other sites, uh, you can export them from one site and import it into another site. So reusable blocks, very cool. We like them a lot. 